Can you see oh. that all right? Uh, it's just a black screen at the moment. <clears throat> maybe try uh, stopping the screen share and re resuming it. Maybe that'll work. Okay. And then for people who are watching the recording, hello. This is our, our Blackfoot workshop that uh, um, that we're running with the Alexandra Center Society in Calgary. And then my name's Azra and I'm with the Calgary Language Nerds. And Colton is the one leading this uh, workshop here. Uh, there we go, Colton. We can see it. We can Sorry. see it? Yep. Okay. So we get started. Okay. So from what I know, most of you, if not all, are um, pretty new to the Blackfeet, the Blackfoot people, our language, our history, our culture. So we just wanted to do the bare, the basics, start with the basics. So let's see. The Blackfeet, the Blackfoot lands, traditional you, Blackfoot. Uh, sorry, Colton, can you just push the present button in the top so it just takes the full screen? Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Got that was an option. Okay. Ah, there we go. That's better. The Blackfoot lands, traditional Blackfoot territory stretched from the Bow River in Alberta to the Yellowstone River in Montana. So Bow River, I believe, is um kind of central Alberta or northern Alberta, and then the um Yellowstone River is in the southern part of Montana, almost in Wyoming. So basically all of pretty much all of Montana and the southern part of Alberta and part of Saskatchewan was um, all Blackfoot territory at some point. And the remaining lands of the Confederacy are in four reserves. One is in Montana, which is actually where I live. And then the other three are in southern Alberta. Let's get started. Blackfoot Society. There are three bands, or tra traditionally there are three bands with 12 clans in each one. Each clan had a um, distinct name and they, these names were often reflective of distinct traits of the clan members. For instance, one is named the All Shorties and the, another one is named the Never Laughs. Bikani, which means the fancy robes, the Gana, or the many chiefs, and the Siksika is the Blackfoot, are the three bands of the Blackfoot Confederacy. But there are um, four bands now because the Bikani band was split by the um, border. So there's a northern um, Bikani band and a southern Bikani band. I'm from the southern Bikani band, or we call it um, Ska Bikani. Okay. The majority of Blackfoot speaking people don't use a writing system. They just spell it phonetically. However, there are a few writing systems that have been developed, but they aren't standardized. So yeah, and um, Blackfoot syllabics and the William Big Bull writing system are the main spelling systems that are used that aren't phonetic. Um, I use the William Big Bull writing system, but um, I have seen people use syllabics every now and then. And um, an important part of our culture, both past and present, is the bison. We were a um, nomadic people. We traveled with the herds of bison. Um, because the bison were extremely important to our, our survival and our way of life, they were, the, um, I guess you could say, the backbone of us. Our clothing, food, and shelter, they all come from the bison. And um, we often hunted bison up. I'm not sure if you know what that is, but it's um, a cliff. And then um, basically what they would do is run the bison off until they, or stampede them off. Um, in Southern Alberta, the largest buffalo jump in North America is head smashed in. And that's right by um, the Apat Sipi Kani Reservation or um, kind of by Rocket. And even today it's, extremely important to us. But the modern Blackfoot, um, many Blackfeet or Blackfoot live on the um, one of the four reservations, whether it be the one in the States or the three in Alberta. 
But there are a lot that live in cities. Um, majority of the natives off of the reservation live in cities that are just right by um, the reservation. For instance, Mohkinstis uh, or Calgary is right by um, Siksika or their reservation. And so a lot of Siksakakwakes or the people from that band live in uh, Calgary because it's close by. And unfortunately, um, a lot of, I spelled it wrong, um, I meant to say many, many Blackfoot suffer from addiction, whether that be um, alcohol addiction or um, other narcotics. And it's um, a really sad thing to see on our reservations because it um, really ravages the community. And um, a lot of our, a lot of young people um, pass away from these addictions or um, live a life, a long life plagued by these addictions. And um, through boarding schools and residential schools, a lot of um, aspects from our culture were lost or um, some are almost gone, as in they will be gone within the next generation. Um, in the States, we call them boarding schools, but I know in um, Canada, they call them residential schools. And that is the main way that we, um, as a people, lost our language is from these um, schools. And it's because they, um, they went after the children and um, stripped their knowledge away from them so that they wouldn't know their um, culture or their language or their people. So, which is why um, there are few Blackfoot speakers today, which is, um, it's the main contributor to our language crisis. I believe there's less than 2000 fluent speakers in Blackfoot, if that. Um, where I live, my reservation, there's only about 50. I'm one of the, I'm one of the 50 speakers that are in the state. So there's not a lot and of. Spots. Are you the? You must be the youngest, right? Or no? Um, for my age, I'd say I speak the best. But there are people my close to my age, some about ten years younger, or older, that speak pretty good Blackfeet, but not really enough to keep it going. I guess you could say. And uh, the Blackfoot language. The Blackfoot language falls into the Algonquian language family. However, the um, Blackfoot language is extremely different from other Algonquian languages. Um, although, I, if I were to listen to an Ojibwe or Cree speaker, I couldn't understand them speak and they couldn't understand me speak. However, if a handful of words are very similar in the um, just with um, differing pronunciations. For instance, um, in Blackfoot, the word gini means a, a rose or a rose hip. And in Ojibwe, it's gini. So very similar, but still different. And um, the Blackfoot language is a descriptive language. Um, most words are descriptions or descriptive for instance, a table is where we eat upon. So it's pretty um, fun to look at Blackfeet words and then kind of dissect them to see what they mean. And that's that presentation. So let's get started on the um, words. Were there any questions people wanted to ask? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Are there any questions? Um, well, then, if there's only 500 speakers left in your, or sorry, 50 speakers left in your reserve, are you recording the language so that it's saved? Um, me personally, not really, but there are a lot of records of them speaking. Um, I do try to record my 
um, conversations with them, but um, most of the time, my conversations in Blackfeet are kind of sporadic. They're not planned, so I don't really have a reporter on me at all times. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, just last night, I ran into a, um, another fluent, an, um, a fluent speaker, and she and I had a really long conversation, I believe, like almost two hours in Blackfeet, and I wish I would have recorded it, but I just didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of how we can leverage technology to yeah. save. There have been many pre um, preservation attempts to kind of um, maintain the language or um, to document it. However, it's really more for simple things. There are a, only a few records of really long stories, really long conversations so it's pretty rare to find one but there are some of course are there any children's stories or nursery rhymes or equivalent that that you teach the children um there are nursery rhymes and um a lot of stories i don't know which actually yes there are children's stories that are often um, told to the children mainly in english but they are told Originally, they are in Blackfeet, but they were translated into English. And um, there's this one story, Napi Kikan Skinix, about um, this old man and these mice. And uh, it's a really popular story. And um, it is taught to children. I believe another speaker is teaching it to children, but I'm not entirely sure how many children can um, can understand it in black people or recite it in black people. oh I was, I was thinking of young children so yeah like when your babies you know the oh. songs that you sing when they're infants and you know and then they grow up hearing it and then yeah you know they just that's that's one way to preserve it is simply to focus on what you do with the children yeah i'm sure there are some but not a whole lot that i've known I, um i wasn't taught that way you know from uh, infant on up I only started learning when I was kind of old enough or you know um, elementary school and um but yeah, I believe there are some but they are not common I I don't know for the details but I know that if a baby like a baby is born being able mm -hmm. to identify and detect a very wide range of sounds mm -hmm. but if they don't hear it in terms of language after mm. a certain age, it starts to disappear. Yeah. So, and and that's why like um, a lot of Asian people have trouble with the R sound, for instance, um, and other things. It's just, if they don't hear it, then they lose it. Yeah. Um, that's a problem here when we're teaching um, children Blackfeet is eventually they, um, after a certain age, they lose their ability to recognize certain phonemes and so they're really used to hearing English phonemes and so when they speak Blackfeet it's really anglicized um, for instance the Blackfeet word for beaver which is sistaki. many young children um, say sistaki instead because it's just easier for them they just really can't say sistaki, which is the um, traditional way of saying it now sistaki is just an anglicized way of saying it so unfortunately there are many anglicizations in our language is there any more questions i had a comment just based on the songs yeah um so I, there's someone else is talking to who she used to run these weekly drop-in <laughs> blackfoot classes and i was talking to her I think she stopped doing it now, unfortunately, but she was doing it at one point. Mm -hmm. And apparently, so her mom would often join in and they would mostly just do songs mm -hmm. because that's all they really knew, like songs and poems and little stories. That's all they really knew. They didn't really know how to teach the language. So that's all they would really do. And that was something that they found was for that, for those two people, mm -hmm. that's something that they had preserved. So, <clears throat> yeah. But. 
cool. Shall we start our charades and our animals? I'm excited for that. We start the charades. <laughs> If it loads. If not, I can always share my screen. That's not a problem. Okay. If it doesn't work. Yeah, I um prepared another slide for the language with um just simple things, introductions and greetings, and then I think that was it. But I think it'd be better to do the um yeah, could you share it? I don't think mine will load. Yep, I'll do it. I'll just share it here. But um I think animals would be good for now just so that you guys aren't overwhelmed. Blackfeet can be hard for um, people to to learn. Yeah, I'll share my screen here. I just gotta open it up first. Okay, animals. Oh, Colton, I think we lost your video. I don't know if it's just if you're still there. Oh, though. did I disappear? Yeah, well, we still hear you though. That's good. Oh, okay. Guys, I just gonna have to imagine what it looked like then. I might have. I think it. Uh, hang on a second. Wait, you should see something on your screen to start your video. Oh. I think when I stopped your screen share, I stopped your video too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's okay. Cool. See, my screen's just being really slow right now. Sure. Did you get it shared? Yeah. Can you see? Uh, no. I might just have to um join on my phone. Yeah, I can what I'll do for you, I'll just throw it in the chat for you so you can oh. see it in the chat so you can see the order of it. Okay. I can do that if it's well um I have the doc on my phone. I could just read it off to you sure. if you guys can um that's fine too. Whatever's easier. Okay. Both work. It's where my computer chooses the worst times to to do this. Can you still hear me, or did I go out? We hear you. We hear oh, you. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Let's see. So the first word is horse, right? From your side. Okay. Yes. The way that you say that is onokomita. Oh, and just really quick, if you um see the words are really spelled um odd, that is the William Big Bull writing system. And I um it would just for the sake of time, I didn't really go into depth about it, but if you are interested, you just could just look up William Big Bull and then you should see more about it. Well, oh, then no, what oh. is you said that these words are rather descriptions so what does that describe oh, no, um it comes from the story um of how we first got the horse we didn't know how to describe it so um prior to the horse we got we had dogs be our beasts of burden as in carry everything and whatnot and um so they horses were able to be worked like dogs, but they were um, large. They were really large animals, and they reminded us of how large elk were. And so onokomita on means um, elk dog because they are large like elks and they are smart like dogs. Thank Next you. one. Oh, okay. Next one is imita, which is dog. Imita. I'm not sure what that one means. I believe it might have something to do with wagging his tail, but I'm not entirely sure. Imita. Okay. Next one is boots. 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 Which is cat. And, um, I thought this was a fairly new word because we really didn't have cats prior to um, colonization. But I did learn a few years ago that it is um, an older word as in it 
predates the um, 1700s, or I guess predates colonization. Next one, mami, 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 which is fish. Um, I'm not sure of the um, meaning of this one. For a um, words like these, as in um, animals, a lot of them are so old that we don't remember what they mean because they come from like just an old Blackfoot, I guess you could say. I would compare it to the Shakespearean version of Blackfeet or Blackfoot because it's just so different from how we speak now that a lot of these words, we don't really remember the origin of. Right, next word, axony, axony, axony. That means pig. And this one, I um, remember it means, has something to do with the snout, like pushing into the mud or the ground. Axony. Next one is buffalo or bison. E knee. E knee. E knee. And this one has to do with it dying because um bison would when we hunted bison they died. <laughs> Which is um an interesting description, but it I guess it works. Next one, B C B. C, B, C, which is bird. Next one, Kiao, 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 which is bear. Next one, Aputskina, Aputskina, Aputskina. And this word, um, means white horn I'm not really sure I've never seen a cow that has white horns but um I think back then from like the steers they had white horns Aputskina. next one Nitwaki Nitwaki oh here it is oh, you can finally see me Chicken, ni duaki. Right, our next word is ganiskina. 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 And this one is, um, ganiskina means it's, it rubs its face. Because that, um, I'm not sure if mice are known for like um, rubbing their faces, but I do know this one might come from a story, um, a traditional story about um, these mice that were dancing. So Ganis. Oh no. That's a bad time to lose him. Oh, that's too bad. Well, maybe it's a good time to lose him because he got through almost all the words. Maybe it's a good time to lose him, actually. Maybe it's better than in the beginning. Um, Fortunately, I had a question about Kamiskina. I was wondering if it was because squirrels rub their eyes. You know, have you ever seen the squirrel sit up and rub his eye? So I was wondering if maybe they're relating the two rodents. Yeah. Mice are known for cleaning their whiskers a lot, so they would rub their faces. Oh, that's true, huh? Did we totally lose him? Uh, I'll get him back here. I'll just call him. Okay. Also, too, how is it that cats were not here before colonization? I mean, weren't there mountain lions? But they may not have been thought of as cats, right? Like, I think that we think of 
So he was saying too that, that that word did exist before colonization, but I think that he was referring to cats like like okay. domestic cats. Hmm. A lot of languages would classify animals differently too. Now I know horses were not here originally, right? That's my understanding, yeah. Hmm. He's, I just got to hold him. He's, he's going to join on his phone. It's a good thing I called him. He didn't, he, he said I was still talking. Because <laughs> that's not frozen on his end. <laughs> it's like I was still talking. I was like, oh no, you don't hear you anymore. <laughs> Ezra and it's Kathy, I'm trying to um, copy the list of the words in the chat, but for some reason I can't seem to copy them. Does anybody have any ideas? Um, what happens when you try to copy it? I just don't get, uh, when I copy, do a copy paste command, I don't get anything. Let me just try it myself and see what happens. So select all. Oh, do you know what you can do? I, I, I get yeah. um, Let's try something here. One second. Yeah, there's a way to do it. Um, oh, oh, that's weird. Actually, I, that's weird. I have copy pasted from there before. You can't save the, the file either. That's weird. I've been in um, Zooms like this before. It's very irritating. It's possible that it's because it's recording. No, it's a security system. Mm. It's a security um, program. I can send it. I think Regina has everyone's emails. I can send it to Regina and then she can send it to everyone. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah. Sorry about the tech issue, everybody. I also just took a print screen um, of it and then just copied it, pasted it onto my Microsoft Word. So. Um, so that's another option, but I will definitely send out whatever Azrin wants to send out to the group. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, hang on one second. He's just, uh, he has the link on his, just text me. He doesn't have it on his phone. So let me just text, let me uh, text him the link so he has it on his phone. Uh, Zoom. Oh, is it here? Oh, it's on him. I just sent him the link. We should be here in here momentarily. Does anyone want to practice saying one of these words live? Naomi, are you volunteering to go first? No. <laughs> <laughs> here he is. Well, the fish sounded like mummy, like what your kid calls you. Like I, I equated the sounds to like mummy, like. But. Mm. All right. Okay, Colton, I think we got you back. Okay, fine. I'm sorry about that. Hey. Like, okay. Good. So um, what animal were we at before I, you guys lost me? We got to all the way to the second last here. Let me just reshare my screen. Uh, we got oh, all the way to the second last one. Okay, so you got to mouse. All right. Yeah, I'll Good. just reshare my screen. There we go. So mouse is Ganiskina. Ganiskina. And um, this word means to like rub its eyes or rub its face. Then the next one or last one is Awakasi. Awakasi. Awakasi, which means deer. This is probably my favorite descriptor for an animal because it means the one that runs crazy. <laughs> and because of that, that you can use it for several animals. Like um, spider is ikshiwakasi, which means like low to the ground, the one that runs crazy. Because they're just small and scurry everywhere. 
or I think some people had some questions too. They're asking, okay. I forget who it was, but some people are asking questions. Okay. Let's ask away. Someone asked what a squirrel, I think it was. Squirrel? Oh, I was asking, I was asking if maybe they were confusing the mouse or connecting the mouse to the squirrel says squirrels rub its face, but someone mentioned that the mouse does rub its whiskers. So yeah. that made sense. Yeah, I um, remember in a particular story, um, an Oppie story, um, in that story, there are a bunch of mice that are um, dancing and their dance includes them like rubbing their face or like rubbing their eyes. So I believe that might be where the, um, name comes from or why we call them that Ganeskina. Yeah. Colton, Any more questions? Yeah, Colton, this is Kathy. Um, I'm just wondering about how you um, describe like plural. So say there was a, a, you know, a herd of bison or, you know, a herd of um, deer. Is, is there something that you add on to a singular word to make it multiple yeah um you add x to the end of it or it, the x sound for instance ponokamita would be ponokamitakes imitakes instead of imita or awakasi would be awakasics um, how do you spell that huh how do you spell that last part the um it's this case Awaka six. It's kind of like an X. It's K K S. You said. Yeah, K S. So like deers, like we don't have deers, but like more than one. Sorry, not we don't have deers, but more than one deer. We just have like a K S. Yeah, like, awaka six. Like that. Can you put that in the chat, please, so we can see it? Yeah. Yeah. Could you do that for me, guys? <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm here to assist. So yeah, I'll do it right now. So for example, if you have a plural, I'll type the plural of deer, for example. So singular deer would be like this in the chat, and then plural would be like this. Ah. Or like, is there, so like for chicken, for example, I just it's like, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just extrapolating. So I would just do this, and as I did in the chat, uh, Colton? Yes, yes, that's okay. right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? If not, we can play charades. Well, what about words to like describe family? Um, you know, children, elders. Is that also a descriptive or a description of? Mm, kind of not um some yeah for instance an elder um would be um get to be which is um an old person literally um or your grandparent would be naksa which is um a really nice word because naksa means um kind of like my source of happiness and how do you spell that i'll type it. um let me text it to you yeah, text it. I'll text me. I'll type it. But if you text it to me, I'll type. I'll, uh, or even uh, in the chat, if you have the chat, that works too. Okay. Whatever you prefer. Uh, oh, there I am. Cool. I'll type that here. Nah. Is that right? Actually, um, sorry, I forgot to add the A at the end. Yeah. Yes. Nah. Hmm. True. And we actually don't have um specific word for grandmother or um a grandfather. It's just nah. Hmm. Mm. And then um. 
other than that, I, I don't um, believe there are many other descriptors that we can trace back for family terms. Um, but for people terms, there are like, for instance, the word for man, ninna, has to do um, with um, the word ninnaisin, which is an accomplishment in warfare. So you could think of it as like a, a coup um, or like a Native American coup, not like a coup where you overthrow a government. Mm -hmm. um, so because of that, Ninna just describes anybody who has an accomplishment in war. Of course, today, we it's not really that relevant, but back then it was. For instance, um, even women that went to war could be described as Ninna. Um, yeah, Blackfeet description words are pretty fun because it gives you an insight into the history and culture. Are there any other questions? Ask away. If what about not... um, Colton for, for medicine or medicine men or healers? Or um, we typically call them holy people, not do actually yeah. For instance, a holy man would be not dua binna or not dua baki. If they can translate into church terms as well, like not dua baki is a holy woman, could also mean none. We do have um, terms for medicine men, but I to be on, I don't really remember because it's a really old term that's not used a lot. The traditional word, I don't remember it in Blackfoot, but in English it means leans on a spirit. Um, but most of the time we just call them not doa binna or not doa baki, just holy men or women. Okay. And, um, with medicine, we call it psalm, and that psalm can even reference um make reference to a headdress a feathered headdress or just any headdress in general that we would use in our culture like me kami boy psalm is the straight up headdress or the straight up medicine that's unique to the black foot and um yeah medicine in it translates to today medicine too if you were to ask somebody if they take medication, you would just say, Kiko Sam, which basically just means, do you take medicine? So do you speak in sentences then? Like is most of the language in, in what we would think of, I um, guess, like English sentences. So say if you said, you know, we're going to go hunting today for bison. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it just sort of single words that, provide the, the description or is it actually sort of what we would consider a sentence? Um, there would be different morphemes that you would attach together to make a sentence. For instance, we're going to hike, hunt bison, you would say, sorry, which is basically just two words because means we are going to hunt and that's basically one word and then is the um, other word. So um, most of the time you can make an entire sentence in just one word. So okay. Hopefully that answers your question. That's All right, it, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's get a little bit of time so people like can practice. words, not two <laughs> words. <laughs> so let's, Every uh, syllable has so much meaning in it. Yeah. Let's transition to a little bit of our game so people can get some practice at least saying some of the words and then we can, we can wrap up. I have to finish exactly at, uh, actually, can I go a couple extra minutes? I think I have, I have to. Yeah, I, I have to go probably, I can maybe go an extra two or three minutes, but that's about it today. Okay. I have to close the Zoom. Um, okay, who wants to be the first, I guess, actor? Who feels brave? 
actually maybe the actor is the easier job because saying the words is probably harder than acting out. <laughs> Sure, I'll try. This is Naomi. Okay, so Naomi, you can pick, you have the words in the in the chat there, I believe. So you can pick any word you want. When you want to guess a word, maybe just either put the virtual Zoom hand up or actually put your real hand up, whichever one you want. And then I'll I'll pick people. And then Colton can be the one to, to help you with the pronunciation. So I have to act like one of those animals? Yeah, that's how charades works, right? Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, so I, I, is it cat? I forget how to pronounce Kata. it. Kata, right? Kata. Uh, I don't know if there's a bunch of people that we can't see, so I don't know if anybody else wanted to go. But go I am Kata. going to. I almost feel like it's harder to guess what I'm saying than it was to guess what Naomi was acting. Kiyo. <laughs> that's terrible. But it was there. Kiyo. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what it was, Naomi? She's a very good actress. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yes, I was a Kiyo. Kiyo. So Naomi, you can select the next. You get to select the next uh, actor or actress. Oh, okay, Catherine. Oh, well, your video is not showing, Catherine. Are you willing to act? Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, uh, Kim. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, sorry, looking at the name here. Of course, it's small in the chat. Hold on. Mituwaki chicken? Mituwaki. 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 Okay. All right, Ask Catherine. Me, how do I hold up my hand? Sorry? How do I hold up my hand? Uh, are you on a phone or a computer? I'm on computer, no video. So on a computer, you at the bottom, near the bottom right, you'll see something that says reactions. It looks like a happy face with a little. Yep, yep. You click that and then it, there's this button that says raise hand. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Catherine, you can pick the next the next actor or actress. Oh, um, let me check participants. I will, Carrie? Okay, yes, I can do it. Um, I don't know what to do though. Like. <laughs> oh, that was it. Oh, oh, oh yes, okay, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy, does Kathy want? Yeah, I said or Kathy. I saw yeah. thumbs up. Um, oh. it is, um, Moomy, a fish. Mum, mum, mummy. Mummy. Oh, right, mummy. right. Sounds like mummy. 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 Uh, you took out. You're really good. Oh. All right, Kathy, get to pick someone else, Kathy. Asrin, how about you? Sure, I can do one. Let's see which one I want to do. <clears throat> okay, I'll do this one. Wait, can you see my hands? My virtual background hides my hands, but hopefully you can see what we're doing. Oh no, wait, I want to change it, I want to change it. No, no, I want to do it from, wait, wait, wait. I got it from, wait, better one. I want to make someone say this one just for fun. <laughs> it looks like a really hard one to say. <clears throat> Uh, moo. That's a hard. It looks like a really long one. Uh, whose hand is that? Oh, Catherine, go ahead. Uh, 
Apotskina. Uh, Apotskina. 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 Okay, let's do uh, Regina and Kaslin. Oh, Kaslin ran away. <laughs> She thought that's funny. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Kim, I see your head up. I'm a glutton for punishment. Uh, Peaky. Bird? Peaky. Peaky? Yeah. Ah, Peaky. Sounded like you're saying sissy, which is another way to say bird. <laughs> Blame it on the computer. <laughs> so you're right, but where did you get that word? <laughs> oh. All right, let's do maybe one one last person. Let me try. You try one. Yeah, you do one, Colton. Oops. Well, <laughs> I just have to one hand it, but it's kind of the sign language for it. Or like that. Think of dances with rules. John uh, um, Is that wait, can I say let's see if I can say it. Uh awakasi. Close. Close as in as in I pronounced it wrong or as in as in like the animal looks like that one, but it's not that one. The animal um is similar to that one. Oh, I got it wrong. Now. Okay, so I I was gonna say eeny. Uh, yeah, that's right. Eeny, eeny, a flow. Eeny. Reminds me of um that one scene in Dancing with Wolves where that guy was going like this, and there's oh, a Tatanka. Tatanka, yeah. <laughs> but oh, I'm gonna stop it, eeny. Okay. Cool. Well, let's start to wrap up here. I don't know if Regina, you had any, I don't know if you had any final notes you wanted to say, anything you wanted to. I just want to say thank you to you and Colton for putting this together. This is fantastic. Yeah, happy to do so. I know if anybody, I don't know if uh, Regina, you want this to go through you, if you want it to go through me, I mean, I'm flexible with whatever, but um, if anyone does want, actually want to look into any actual Blackfoot lessons, like with Colton, that's something that he does. Um, and so you can always, maybe I'll just type, uh, I'll just type my, uh, email in the chat and just email me or I don't know if Regina, you want it to go through you or how do you want to do that? Um, I think with the back Blackfoot class is because Colton is out of Montana. So it's probably likely going to be online. So I think it was going <laughs> would be great if anyone wants to take any other language classes through the alexander center though but please message us and um we'd love to host some as our new, um, other language classes okay so there's my email you can also i'll, just, I'll put my website too um this one, the language name. yeah there we go so it's email me or you can go to my website and there's a contact form on there and then um if you're interested then yeah colton's teaching right now he does a he has a Oh no, it starts the next month actually. Yeah, he has a group class he's starting up next month um, for a charity here here in Washington's well, Canadian charity, not just in Calgary, but they are in Calgary as well. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, but just because we can't copy. Oh, are you gonna send out that list? Oh, right, you can't Regina? copy paste. Yeah, <laughs> so can you include Azrin's contact information in there? Absolutely, and click on the link, then that will bring up the website at least. Ah, okay. Thank you. And we're recording for posterity that I don't know how to use Zoom. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Colton, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to offer Blackfoot yeah. now thank through Calgary language. It's really fun. I'm having fun learning it too, actually, when in our, in our lessons, so it's fun. And um, thanks for being here. Thank you, it was really interesting. Thank yeah. you. Yes, thank you it for was putting really, this on. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Love it was a lot of fun. Different. Yeah. Cool. It's like social hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye.
Thank, Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.